Hello Internet, it is I, Dave Foreman, also known as Manorant Matorian on the interwebs. And today I am going to do something I have not done in a very long time. And that is a mock review. And as you can see before you, from the title and the thumbnail, I am going to do a mock review of my self-mock Mateo. Um, this is the latest version of the character and the mo like... In the most recent update, uh, he got all the uh, cloth elements, the uh, uh, the original Darth Vader cape. Uh, I also used two Phasma capes and then a Chirrut Imway uh, skirt uh, dealy bob to make that work. So, uh, I'll get into the mock a little bit. Uh, this is the way he... This is what he looks like from uh, the other angles. Pretty, pretty cool. There, there's the, uh, there's the Phasma Capes. Kind of dissect the layers here. Phasma Capes, Phasma Cape, and then you get into the, uh, Chirrut Imway thing that actually secures his blades to the back now. And then, there's Mateo's butt. Oh, there's his keys. They just hang out that back there, I guess. Uh, so yeah, um... That's so. One of the things I discovered with this mock that I want to talk about is the the cape, the 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 Vader cape. I I love. I just absolutely love it. And the reason I love it so much is because it actually allows for proper draping. Um, if you actually fold it out and have everything more or less the way it's supposed to be like on a va on the Vader figure or maybe some people's inclinations to have their capes it actually doesn't end up it doesn't end up uh, looking all that good so I found that if you actually tuck it back a bit and actually uh, put some wrinkles in it it ends up looking really good like it actually looks like what a large section of fabric on a, a character would actually look like because it would fold over and it would it would drape and wrinkle um and actually doing so uh you know keeping it off of his shoulders there i find really helped sell the look that i wanted for mateo uh by adding all these uh fabric pieces which was like really flowy fabric and really like having a lot of layers so i was so happy with how that turned out one of the other updates I did to him uh, recently that my uh, that uh, Peter uh, from Bricks by the Bay will be very thankful for is that I updated his ankles to give him friction friction adders, uh, and he's so much more stable now. Uh, it's great because I don't have to do my symposium. He's just he just stands there and does Mateo stuff. <clears throat> just doot, pick him up, set him down. Not much trouble. Where he, whereas he used to be just a ton of hassle to just like finick with and pose him up. Now, not a problem at all. Um, so next, what I'll do is I'll uh, pull off some of the, uh, I'll pull off the cape and and some of the other bits, and then uh, we'll take a look at like some of his uh, accessories. And we're back. Now, as you can see, I've taken off uh, the capes, with the exception for the uh, Chirrut Imway skirt, because you just really got to dig into the character, the figure, to uh, get to that stuff. So, uh, I'll just be lifting that up and showing that off. But uh, here you have some of Mateo's accessories. Uh, first here is the pendant that uh, that he wears around his neck. Um, it used to be an upside-down bat, using the little bat uh, minifig piece thing. And um, I changed it because th that thing kept falling off and I actually lost it once and bought myself another one to replace it and then found the old one. So I just decided, uh, you know, screw that and wanted something a little more stable. So I went f more for like this, just like, just more generic looking pendant, but it's a lot more stable. So then you have his lantern which uh, a lot of people really like. Uh, when I'm at Bricks by the Bay, 
Uh, they really, oop, hey, it's missing a tile. Oops. <laughs> um, a lot of people really like the lantern and comment on it, and um, it's I, I I've noticed that it draws people's attention a little bit, um, and that's one of those uh, examples of where like contrasting elements on your mock can help distinguish it because like it could you know th this one little element draws a person's eye in and then they start looking at the rest of the mock and they go oh wait oh wow that's neat you know they they look at it and um then end up giving your mock some attention where maybe as if it was just a mean looking dude who all was the same colors it might not do that as well uh i've noticed that's a really uh really neat eye catcher at, at the tables uh here's mateo's bag um it's all lego it, none of it's uh custom element and there's actually stuff in the bag uh there's oh gotta kind of peel it apart a little bit but there's some books in here uh he's got a medicine bottle and a syringe uh, if i can get to him if my big fat fingers can Grab him. Oh, no. Ah. Come on. Out with it. Out. Is that everything? Uh, yep, that's everything. Uh, okay, so that's that's the contents of Mateo's bag. Syringe. Medicine bottle. Or you could claim it's booze. I, I'll leave that up to your imagination. Uh, this is Mateo's journal. He writes stuff in it, and it's a little dirty because he's, like, dropped it in the mud. Uh, a book on botany and herbs and stuff like that and then a spell book um, and those are just the old school minifig books that I've repurposed for for him and um, I actually kind of want to get a few different ones that way I can maybe just change out the books that he has every now and again uh it's one of those things that like nobody ever really sees it at the tables or you know uh in person but it's one of those nice little caveats that are there for me and it's there to show off and it's just it's an it's an extra layer of detail that helps tell the stories the, the story of the figure um and, and that's really the only point to a lot of the accessories is they just help add to the character uh, I feel like one of the things that makes Mateo such an interesting character for a lot of people is there's the layers and the complexities to him. He's not just a, a mean-looking Makuta, although that's what he originally started as, or, you know, just a you know, run-of-the-mill self-mock. There, you know, there's a lot more going on there. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons people have responded to him. Um, then he's got his uh, knives on the back here, and you can't actually pull them off of these rubber elements if you stretch it over the blade. Um, and again, we'll lift this up. Uh, Mateo's keys right here. Uh, they kind of naturally want to fall here, but you can actually pick them up and, and move them closer to like the side of his pockets where they probably maybe should be, but again, they just kind of like to end up resting back there uh the other the other notable detail is mateo has a pocket watch um he's a plague doctor and doctors need to be on time and very and mateo likes to be very punctual so he's always looking at his watch piece because he wants to know what time it is uh and i actually designed his legs to have pockets for his stuff He's got a pocket there for his watch, and then he's got another one on the other side. Um, I at one point had some uh, minifig coins in there, uh, but they kept falling out, so that just didn't work. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the great things I like about Mateo's legs is he actually has bionicle pockets. And uh, as you can see, he's pretty poseable. Like, he's really, really poseable. So he could like, you know, be like skulking, skulking on the t rooftop and ready to pounce on somebody, and he's you know he's ready to strike or something. Um, his arms are actually pretty poseable, and that's just something I like about my figures personally. I like, I like them to move and do stuff. Um, 
Also, another thing, uh, you know, his head is pretty poseable too, even though like I've wrapped it in this, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a hood from a Duplo figure. It was only released in like two sets and I just found it one day, uh, on uh Bricklink and I'm like, Oh, that's cool. I wonder if I could use that for something. And it fits perfectly over the, uh, the Paraka skulls that, uh, I've been using to make Mateo's head. Um, it just the 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 pointed part of the hood fits perfectly over it, so it just it really works for the figure, and it really solves a problem that I've had uh, with the figure for many years, and that was like that like stark white paraka head just glaring out from underneath his mask. I hated it, and now I with one cloth element, I went from hating that part to loving that part because now it just perfectly accentuates his chin. On, on his mask line right there so yeah um what else uh yeah his mask um now the other cool thing about Mateo's mask is he is actually wearing it like a mask it is held on by two rubber bands stretched around these uh these uh um bushings these half bushings uh couldn't get him to actually wear a hat though like i couldn't get the hat to actually be a hat uh it had to connect on there and that's you know the classic scrounge shield oop that fell off that bit likes to fall off um it's just held on there by a single stud um so the other thing is his like it's hard to tell because there's all the stuff going on around it but his belt is actually a belt that's what actually holds on um it's actually connected through the uh through here this loops through it but his belt actually is just wrapped around him it's not really totally secured ever you know anywhere else and so it actually wiggles and moves around and then uh, the blades on here used to come off and they used to slide around but now uh, they stay pretty much where they're supposed to so yeah um that's Mateo uh, that is a, a nice closer look at Mateo um I've had him since 2010 I, I built him when I li was living with my mom briefly and he started off as just a come on Stand up. There we go. Um, he started off as just a Makuta. Uh, he had, you know, you'll look at the older versions. He had the spikes on the back. Uh, I, I eventually took those off when I did all the cloth elements. Here's the Vader cape. Ooh. And then the Phasma capes go, they go on his arm. They go through the, the Metru arm here and then attached to the back right here and that's what this disc piece is for it keeps those in there uh, and so yeah Mateo just slowly over time just evolved more and more as a character and as the character grew the mock grew with it and then like came all the cool accessories and the backstory and the reason to have the accessories and the you know the cool stuff like that so you know, to me, Mateo is like a great example of how the story can influence the mock, and the mock can then influence the story, and it's just it it creates this interesting feedback loop. Uh, and so one of the things I try to encourage is, you know, and I encourage you guys to do this, is think about your mock in like an everyday setting. Like, what do they carry? What do they want? Like. Do they would they have a cell phone on them? Would they have like a bottle of water? Would they carry a cane like Mateo does because he's fancy? Um, you know, these are questions you can ask yourself, and if the answer is yes, then that gives you way more room to build. And like the cool thing about that is like your 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 mock becomes like this really cool high end action figure with all these great accessories and all this great posability that you can instill into your mock and and it you know it becomes way more fun to give them these neat little ideas and little details that just make the mock 
all that much richer. Um, and like the crazy thing is, anybody can do it. Like it's so easy to just make the things for your mock so that they just have them, and then they just become these really cool action figures. So I definitely encourage you guys to go out there and and and, and add details, like accessorize your mocks. Uh, some other mockers do it too, and it's always fun to see that. Um, I love Desky. I love Mesky with her desk. Uh, that Elira does has. I love that when she did that. That was one of my favorite things. And that's just another example of how you could take uh, something external from the mock itself. Like there's the mock itself, but then all the rest of this stuff is external to it. And then you can just, you know. There's a cool reason to build a desk or build a chair or build a evil looking throne or, you know, like there's all kinds of things you can do for your mocks if you just think about their world and their surroundings and what they would have with them or on them. And it's it opens up such a huge world of possibility. So I really encourage you guys to try that. So, anyways, that's enough of me rambling, I think. Um, I hope this video doesn't end up being too long. Uh, I'm still kind of new at this. I'm kind of rusty, so, you know, give me a break. Uh, <laughs> definitely leave some feedback on how I can do it better, because I would really much appreciate that. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button down in the bottoms, and I will talk to you guys next time.